in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field. Now Dinah, the daughter of Leah, whom she had borne to Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and violated her. His soul was strongly attracted to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman and spoke kindly to the young woman. So Shechem spoke to his father Hamor, Get me this young woman as a wife. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his livestock in the field. So Jacob held his peace until they came. Then Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out to Jacob to speak with him. And the sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved and very angry because he had done a disgraceful thing in Israel by lying with Jacob's daughter, a thing which ought not to be done. But Hamor spoke with them. The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife, and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us, and take our daughters to yourselves, so you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me I will give. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he had defiled Dinah their sister. We cannot do this thing, to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. But on this condition we will consent to you. If you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. So the young man did not delay to do the thing, because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of their city. These men are at peace with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade in it. For indeed, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us to be one people. If every male among us is circumcised, as they are circumcised, will not their livestock, their property, and every animal of theirs be ours? Only let us consent to them, and they will dwell with us. And all who went out of the gate of his city heeded Hamor and Shechem, his son. Every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of his city. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. And they killed Hamor and Shechem, his son, with the edge of the sword, and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled. 
They took their sheep, their oxen, and their donkeys, what was in the city, and what was in the field, and all their wealth. All their little ones and their wives they took captive, and they plundered even all that was in the houses. Then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled me by making me up no... Even in parishness. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, Father. How are you? I'm fine. What about you? Fine, thank you. Wonderful. So at the seven o'clock in Asatana, we have 21 participants on the play. So we now we are yes the number will be growing as as we know so uh, i welcome all of you to today's bible discussion because it's already time we'll have to begin with the opening prayer we pray in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit god our father as we shatter at the incidents that are recorded for us in your book, we recognize that this is your truth and you mean it for our hearts in our various circumstances, in our various places and times. We pray that you'll speak to us and that you would instruct us by your word and that you would be honored even in our hearing, in our obeying of your word. We pray that as we discuss the events recorded in Genesis chapter 34 and 35, you, O Lord, will be with us through and through. We ask all these through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So once, once again, I welcome all of you to today's Bible discussion we have two chapters to look at chapters 34 and chapters 35 now that we are 27 can we get a volunteer to read genesis chapter 34 for us genesis chapter 34 for us at least let us, let us use about six minutes to to read genesis chapter 34 and 35 so that we can discuss it do you have any volunteer do you have any volunteer? Yes, so Mr. John Warman has raised the hand. So, Daddy, uh, thank you. Can you please unmute yourself and read for us? Yes. Dinah, the daughter whom Leah had born to Jacob, went out to visit some of the women of the land. When Shechem, son of Hamo, the Havite, the leader of the region, saw her, he seized her and lay with, and lay with her by force. He was strongly attracted to Dinah, daughter of Jacob, and was in love with a young woman. So he spoke affectionately to her. Shechem said to his father Hamo, get me this young woman for a wife. Meanwhile, Jacob heard that Shechem had defiled his daughter, Dinah. But since his sons were out in the field with his livestock, Jacob kept quiet until they came home. Now Hamo, the father of Shechem, went out to discuss the matter with Jacob. Just as Jacob's sons were coming in from the field, when they heard the news, the men were indignant and extremely angry. Shechem had committed an outrage in Israel by laying with Jacob's daughter. Such a thing is not done. Hamo appealed to them, saying, my son Shechem has his heart 
set on your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. Intermarry with us. Give your daughters to us and take our daughters for yourselves. Thus, you can live among us. The land is open before you. Settle and move about freely in it and acquire holdings here. Then Shechem appealed to Dinah's father and brothers. Do me this favor and whatever you ask from me, I will give. No matter how high you set the bridal price and gift, I will give you whatever you ask from me. Only give me the young woman as a wife. Jacob's sons replied to Shechem and his father Hamor with God, speaking as they did because he had defiled their sister Dinah. They said to them, we are not able to do this thing to give our sister to an uncircumcised man, for that would be a disgrace for us. Only on this condition would we agree to that, that you become like us by having every male among you circumcised. Then we will give you our daughters and take your daughters in marriage. We will settle among you and become one people. But if you do not listen to us and be circumcised, we will take our daughter and go. Their proposal pleased Hamel and his son Shechem. The young man lost no time in acting on the proposal since he wanted Jacob's daughter. Now he was more highly regarded than anyone else in his father's house. So Hamor and his son Shechem went to the gate of their city and said to the men of their city, These men are friendly towards us. Let them settle in the land and move about in it freely. There is ample room in the land for them. We can take their daughters in marriage and give our daughters to them. But only on this condition will the men agree to live with us and form one people with us, that every male among us be circumcised as they themselves are. Would not their livestock, their property, and all their animals then be ours? Let us just agree with them so that they will settle among us. All who went out of the gate of the city listened to Hamo and his son, Shechem. And, and all the males, all those who went out of the gate of the city were circumcised. On the third day, while they were still in pain, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, brothers of Dinah, each took his sword advance against the unsuspecting city and massacred all the males. After they had killed Hamor and his son Shechem with a sword, they took Dinah from Shechem's house and left. Then the other sons of Jacob followed up the slaughter and sacked the city because their sister had been defiled. They took their sheep, cattle, donkeys, whatever was in the city and in the surrounding country. They carried off their wealth, their children, and their women, and looted whatever was in the house. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have brought trouble upon me by making me repugnant to the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites and the Perizzites. I have so few men that if these people unite against me and attack me, I and my household will be wiped out. But they retorted, should our sister be treated like a prostitute? The end of the reading. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woman, for this reading. So 
Let us tackle the first question. The very first question. What is the main event described in Genesis 34? What is the main event described in Genesis chapter 34? Any answer? What is the main event? Yeah, please, if you want to share, yeah. We have Araba Forsen, please, yes. Uh, um, hold on, can you hear me, please? Yes, evening. please, yeah. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening, good evening, uh, we is, can is hear it, you. Is it the... Um, the story about um, Diana. Yes, it is. Uh, so, and what is the main story. event? Yeah, it's a story about Diana. So, what is the story about Diana? Diana and how she was, so I say, raped by um, Shechem. Okay. And um, and how her brothers reacted to this by um, even though the, the, the Shechem asked for her hand in marriage her brothers um, pretended like they were you know they were not too angry and accepted it on certain terms okay. but then uh, eventually they 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 didn't go by those terms and 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 and, and um, revenge revenge seriously on the uh, on the the, the 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 people is it Hammer or so the father of the uh, one who raped her and and okay. his and his and his family and his city. Okay. okay. So thank you, thank you, to Araba Forsen. Yes, uh, Mr. Mormon has also texted his answer, the rape of Dinah, then Joseph Kwashitu, the raping of Dinah. So uh, the, the main event is the raping of Dinah, but other, other events, sub-events too are in there. So it is reported to Jacob, the sons were not there, the sons will come and they'll get to know of what has happened to their, their kid sister. Then now they will take revenge. So the main event here is the raping of Dinah, then the reaction of, of, of Jacob, and the reaction of, of the brothers of Dinah. So with that done, let us move to question two. Question two. Now here we can uh, we can have multiple answers. So I just want us to open up our our, our minds and hearts to look for multiple answers. So the question is, who is to be blamed? Who is to be blamed for Dinah's violation? Who is to be blamed for Dinah's violation? So now I want us to, yes, today let us, let us point, um, let, let us uh, point, point out people who, who are to be blamed for the predicaments that happened to Diana? Who is to blame? If you have an answer, just unmute yourself and you speak. Who is to blame? Who is to blame for the rape of Diana? Who is to blame? Who is to blame? I think Dina herself. Dina her herself, yes. Her Please parents. explain. Explain. Okay, she. I think she went somewhere. I'm not sure she's supposed to be there. If she's not supposed to be there and she went there, then she's to be blamed. But if she went there and she was raping, her parents are away. So I think the parents and Dina are to be blamed. So, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll take your first answer that Dinah is to be blamed. She went yes. to a place that she was not supposed to. Good. Then Philip Zoe has texted us this, 
there's Ansa, and he also says Diana. Then Mr. Joseph Kwashi says Shechem. Then Mr. George Woma, John Woma says Hamo, who didn't control his fashion. Uh, here, I, I'm sure Daddy wanted to say Shechem. Daddy wanted to say Shechem. Please, who, who again can we blame for Diana's wedding coming too? Father, my second one is uh, Jacob, Diana's parents. Okay, so Diana's parents are also to be blamed. Good. In fact, the first person to blame here, I, the first person I'll, I'll, I'll point fingers at is Jacob. It's Jacob. Why? In Genesis chapter 31, verse 3, in fact, God tells Jacob that go back to your father's house, to the place where I called your ancestors. Go back to Bethel. Now, he meets with Esau last week in our, in our discussion. He meets with Esau. And Esau tells his brother, oh, let us journey home. Then Jacob will give excuses. Oh, the way my children and my farm animals are tired. Even if we work for another day, we are really going to be too exhausted and we might uh -huh, die. So he will stop up. He'll, he'll bring a stop to his journey. And it will now be okay to stay in the region of Shechem. God has sent, God is sending you to Bethel. And now you are telling yourself that it is enough for you to rest here. So he disobeyed God. And by disobeying God, he becomes the number one cause of the problem that Dinah faces. Now the second person too that you have all uh, this and identified is Dinah herself. You see, the, 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 the Jews or the Hebrews, they are special people. They're elect of God. And in fact, God will tell them time without a number that do not mingle with the neighboring house. Do not mingle with the people around you. Aina, you get up and you go to go and see the daughters of your, or this, of your neighbors. Baba, now that this thing has happened, when you go home, what will you be asked? What did you go to do there? You asked, you asked no, no permission. You went there. And this is what has befallen you. Then the next person that we can also, also put the blame on is Shechem himself. We can see Shechem as the, the prince of, of the land of Shechem. The, the father Homer was the Homer is the one who, who was leading the people. So you see a beautiful girl. And all that comes into your mind is how to possess that girl. And yes, some people are like that. We are attracted by the beauty of the people that we see. And all that we our, our mind tells us is that, ah, go and take possession, go and take possession, go and take possession. But dear people of God, you must also know that, in fact, raping young girls is another way of getting a wife for the people of the ancient Near East. Yes, it was a normal practice, especially the not the Jews, but those who are around them. That when you see a girl and you like the girl, quickly you jump on her, make sure you impregnate her. And by impregnating her, she becomes yours. So for, for Shechem, he might be doing what was normal in the sight of this in society. But that does not make it right. It's not every societal norm that we have to approve or we have to live by. Will you, will you destroy the life of, of a young girl? You don't even truly know, know her like that. Then you mount her and you try and destroy her life. So yes, Shechem himself can also be blamed. Uh, so these, these are some of the people that we can put the blame on. So Jacob, because he didn't move forward in, on his journey, and also Dinah herself, then Shechem, the one who actually did the violation. So let us move to our, our third question. Our third question. Let us describe Jacob's reaction and also describe the reaction of the sons of Jacob to the violation of Dinah. Question three. How did Jacob take the, the news? How did he take it? What did he do? How did he take it? What was his move? And what did the, the, the sons also do when they heard of what has happened to their younger sister? 
anyone to share with us? So, Araba Forsen, please yeah, share with us your answer. Yeah, I mean, Jacob was um, not happy at all when he heard about it. And uh, he waited for his sons to come home. And when his sons came home and they were told, they were also not happy at all. But to mm-hmm. them, just a long story, story short, two of his sons, I think Simeon and Levi, they took... Uh, oh, no, I think eventually, the, yeah, to tell a long story, Simeon and Levi, Levi um, um, they, 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 they killed the people um, the, the, those, um, the city, the, the, those people, the families who, who did that, who, um, whose son did that. That is to cut okay. it short. Yeah, to cut okay. it short. And okay. the father was not really happy about it, but mm-hmm. that's what they did. But they tricked them. They tricked them into circumcising their sons um as, uh, as 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 uh, as in order for them to be able to marry Dinah but even after they had they had agreed and done that they went ahead and killed them okay. as revenge thank you mommy any any other the, the description of 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 the reaction of Jacob and also the reaction of the sons of Jacob when they heard the 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 violation of their their sister. Uh, anyone to, to add? Anyone to add? Yeah, Mr. Pokuche, yeah, Johannes, Mr. Pokuche, please. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, Jacob's initial reaction was that he didn't say anything. Obviously, within him, he was not pleased. And the sons, too, they were indignant. But all of them did not react immediately. I mean, it took them some time to hatch a plot, you know, so they, 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 they were indignant, but they kept things to themselves. And then later on, um, has their plot that they carried out. So Jacob was actually, uh, he, he, he was silent. He didn't show any emotion. He was just silent. And Bible will say that he, the sons were in the field. So it's either he was waiting for them to come so they will all act as a family. But the reaction of Jacob was that he was silent. He seemed indifferent about what had happened to the daughter. And they appear, let me ask you, if you, it comes to, to, to your attention that your daughter has been defiled, will you be as sober as Jacob was or you will be as aggressive as the sons were? I just need two responses on this. Will you be as sober as, as Jacob was, or you be aggressive as his sons were? You know, that something like that has happened to you, your daughter, or somebody close to you. I just need two quick responses, then we move on. Father, good evening. Yeah. Good evening, mommy. I don't think I'll, I don't think I will become like Jacob. <laughs> I, am, I think my first reaction would be yeah, one of, uh, of shock, anger, and whatever follows. As for calmness, I don't think I'll be calm like Jacob. Thank you, Mommy. So Mommy's not going to be calm. Can we get another response on this? Can we get another response on this? I think uh, the age of Jacob really could not let him move. Certainly, we are not told how he was feeling. Sure he was very sad. Okay. And he knew the young man would come. Okay. So he was waiting for them. I think so for him, because of So he was waiting for his sons to come. Beautiful. But we are Beautiful. not told that to he move was to told question how he four. felt at the time. Okay, maybe. Okay. So move to question four. Question four. Question four asks that we are told that Shekel fell in love with Dinah. Afterwards, so after raping Dinah, after having his way with Dinah, we are told that he he fell in love with her. He became gentle. He became calm. He became really. So the question is, 
What possible can this be? What possible can this be? How possible can this be? How can we explain that, that Shechem fell in love with Dinah? Do you think it is true that he fell in love with her? Or you think otherwise? Any response for us? Yeah, Mr. Pukuche, yeah, please, uh, Johannes, think, uh, please. You know, I think initially he was interested in her. But then there was something that we said earlier, that this was like uh, something that the practice of people in that area that at the time, you know, you rape and then when the person gets, um, I mean, when the lady gets pregnant, then uh, you you would ask for a hand or you could then so i mean within the context of this being part of the culture of the people so okay. you know in today's terms you, you will frown on it obviously but then if it was really within the context of the culture of the people then i believe he was he, he really before he asked for a hand i mean to go I had a, a rip and then later on, I mean, otherwise it doesn't uh, 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 make sense. Okay, thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Uh, so, Father Akese has sent us a response. On rape, and he said, Days from paragraph 2356 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, rape wounds the respect, freedom, and fight. Rape causes grief, damage, and intrinsically evil. It's not. Symphorian tells us that, yeah, Shechem fell in love with her, but did not know how wisely to go about it. And so maybe he has been spying her in the neighborhood and has fallen in love, but didn't know how to go about it. And so when the chance came, he just had to, I mean, pounce on on her. So we are, we also have to be we have we have to be thinking through this. When we fall in love, how do we get to the the object of our love? Will we use a crooked means to get the person, or we try to use, I mean, good good means, uh, good avenues to get the attention of the person first? I mean, have a discussion with the person, try to woo the person, so the person will have a say in the relationship, but not totally forcing yourself on him or her. Now we move to question five. What proposal do Shechem and Hamo make to Jacob? and his sons. So the deed has been done. Shechem tells the father, see, I'm in love with this girl. Please hey, get her for me as wife. So the father and the son moves to Jacob and his sons. And now a proposal is made. Please, what was the proposal that was made? Question five for the day. What proposal was made? What proposal was made? Anybody to share with us? What did Hama and Shekhan? Um, no, the, yes, think, please. Um, he said his son was in love with Jacob's daughter, so he, he proposed marriage intermarriage between their people and Jacob's people. So that they could stay there with them, so that they so could live anywhere. First, mm -hmm. So they proposed a marriage, not only marriage. between Shechem and Dinah, but also between their sons and their daughters. 
And in fact, yes. uh, Hamo and Shechem will bring out some benefits that the people, I mean, Jacob's family will enjoy if they allow or they agree into the proposal that they were bringing. See, you can transact business with anybody you want. In fact, you can acquire property for yourself. So in fact, it's, you see, my son has, has done something evil, okay? But if you allow him to have your daughter and also allow us to also have your daughter, see, you are going to live as brothers and sisters. We'll do good business. And in fact, we know that God is with you. So in fact, some of the blessings that you have will also twinkle down to us. So for Shechem and for Hamo, see, it shouldn't only be a, a, a one-time kind of marriage, but it should be a marriage treaty between their, their, their city and the family of, of Jacob. So that was the proposal that they were bringing before Jacob and his sons. So question six, what is the reason <laughs> behind Jacob's son's deceitful demand? And here, when, when Moses was, was writing this story, he made it clear from the very beginning that the intention of the sons of Jacob was dubious. Now, we have heard the whole story. What was the deceit? What was the intention behind the, this deceitful demand of the sons of Jacob? Yes. Anybody to give us an answer? One word will do, a sentence will do. What was the reason behind Jacob's son's deceitful demand? They wanted to take revenge. Correct for three points. For them, it was all about revenge. As soon as they heard that they are sister had been defiled in their mind revenge see we have to fight for our sister we have to teach these people a lesson so already they were concocting something to do against the people of shechem against the people of shechem now we have read the story so now as we move to question seven we are asked were the brothers of dinah justified were they justified in attacking the city of Shechem? Were they justified? Were they justified? Were they justified? Were they justified? At least I want to hear some new, some new voices. To hear some new voices. Were they justified? Were they justified? So, for those who have read The Merchant of Venice, uh, A Pound of Flesh, see? To measure the, 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 the value of justice, it's not easy. If, if right now I slap you and you say you slap me back as, as, as a reaction or retaliation of what I've done, how sure are you that the slap that you give to me as a reply will be of the same intensity, weight and pain? See, when children are, are, are playing and, and one gives one, oh, this, another a blow, there is no, let me also give. And when the second one returns the blow and the first one says, ah, you know, what I gave you, it was less, so yours is too much. Then the other person to come. Uh -huh. See, to balance the skills of, of justice is very, very difficult. Their sister was raped. They asked that, oh, who will allow you to marry to marry our sister? In fact, our other listen, women. But before this, you should you should allow yourselves to be circumcised so we can see you as one family. Now they have circumcised themselves. Three days into the circumcision, 
when the pain was at its apogee, that was the time that the sons of Jacob, the brothers of Dinah. If I should know that Simon and Levi are the full brothers of Dinah, Dinah is actually the daughter of Leah, the servant of, uh, listen, the, the second, the first wife of, of Jacob. So these two brothers, they, they were like 100% siblings, not half, 100%. So they would take the lead. They went there, they slaughtered the men. They took the women. They took livestock. Ah, one rape. Yes, rape as far as I can say as students is intrinsically evil. But will you stand on one evil act and perpetrate more than what has been done to you? That you kill all the men in the city? That you loot what they have? I don't think they were too, they were justified. I don't I don't think they were, they 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 outstepped their bounds. They outstepped their bounds. Yes, the people of God, people who 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 hurt us, people will offend us. But must we overdo it? Must we overdo it? So W B is also saying to all of us that no, the sons of Jacob were not justified in what they did to the city of Shechem. So we move to the eighth question. What main lessons can be derived from Genesis chapter 34? At least let us get some three lessons, then we move to Genesis chapter 35. What, what main lessons have you learned from this? What main lessons? If you get three, I think to be good for us. What main lessons have we learned from Genesis? Who is speaking for us? What have we learned from Genesis chapter 34? Anybody to help us? Yes. Araba Forsen. One lesson. Give us one yeah. lesson, please. We need to listen to God's word to us, God's instructions to us and obey it. If Jacob had so listened for mommy, to mommy, we need to listen to yeah. So we need to listen to God. If if Jacob had gone straight to Bethel, this thing wouldn't have happened. When 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 we take a detour from what God has told us, sometimes we put ourselves in uncomfortable situations and we bring problems upon ourselves. From Sister Gifty Nuchuga, she says we should not revenge. We should not take revenge on each other. We should not take revenge. Thank you very much. Any other? Any other? Any other? Any other? Any other, any other. Yes, so for the young ones uh, among us, it is, it is always good for you to let your parents know where you are going. Diana didn't tell, and she went alone. There was no company, so this happened to, to her. It is good. Oh, mommy, I'm going to this friend's place. Oh, daddy, I'm moving here. Yes, and sometimes it, it will be good to, to move in twos. Moving to because as a young girl, anything can happen to you. Yes, so we should also learn that. We should also yeah. learn that. Now we move to chapter 35. And our first question is why does Jacob? We turn to Bethel. The verse one has the answer. Why, you? Mr. Pukuchi? to go to Bethel. Okay, so yes, 
So for Mama Maria, God actually asked him to go to Bethel. That was God's original commandment. Go back to the land that I gave to your fathers. But he stopped at Shechem. Now Wahala don't happen. Now God speaks again. Jacob, go to Bethel at once and live there. Build an altar there to me, the God who appeared to you when you were running away from your brother Esau. So God will reiterate the commandment that he gave to, to Jacob. See, move from this place, go to Bethel. So he moves because God asked him to. Now, chapter the 10th the question says, Jacob instructs his household to give him all their idols and earrings. And he buries them under the oak tree near Shechem. The question is, what is the significance of burying the idols and earrings? So before they moved, he makes the people bring all their earrings, all their idols. He buries them. Why will he do this? Why will he do this? Why will he do this? Who is answering for us? Mr. Bukuche, is your hand up? I just got her back. I was thinking, is it in fulfillment of the first commandment? The Ten Commandments, the first commandment. Uh, you see, ar around this time, they have not yet been given the Ten Commandments. And we are in Genesis. The Ten Commandments will be given in Exodus chapter 20. Uh, we have not gotten there yet. Uh, but but in, this, in this chapter, uh, Jacob has a reason for asking his, his people to, to bring their, their idols and earrings. Uh, so that's what we are trying to, to look out for now. And thank you, Daddy, for that beautiful attempt. Any other contribution? Good evening, Father. Yes, good evening. Um, please, I'd like to answer the question. Okay, um, please. Please, I think Jacob burying the idols um, symbolizes a sign of complete and total rejection of those objects. Because um, total, please someone... Wait. Total and complete rejection. Rejection, of those, yes. Of the, please, uh, of the idol worship. We have to worship. note this down. We must yeah. note this Total rejection and, and complete rejection. And complete, Please yeah, continue. Complete rejection. Um, I say so because um, he could have melted the gold um, or whatever um, items they were made up of and repurpose them or use them, but he decided to bury them, meaning that he wanted to part away with them completely. He didn't want anything to do with them because he decided to follow God and just God alone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Philip. Thank you so much. Any other, any other, any other contribution? Any other contribution? So from, from Irene, it signifies a new beginning for them to be loyal to only God. It signifies it's a new beginning for them to be loyal to only God. And from John Woman, and Daddy, he says, it was like shaking off the dust of their feet, uh, taking us into the Gospels already, leaving as he, leaving them forever, leaving behind all the things that distract them, all the things that distract them. Please, any other, any other, I love the responses that are coming. I love the responses that are coming. So, if you recall from the chapters when actually Jacob was now moving from Laban, we are told that Rachel stole uh, the gods 
of his father. Uh -huh. You remember? Good. Then uh, when the father came searching for it, uh, she put under the chair that she was sitting on. Then when she was asked to get up, she would say that, you know, I'm I'm that month, I'm the right time of the month, I'm seeing the moon, so please, I can't get good. So now, Jacob knows the, the God that is God. Every settlement that you move into, they have their God, plenty of gods. And now, people were carrying these small, small gods, asking for whatever that they needed, for fertility, for prosperity, for protection, and all that. Now, when they got to Shechem, and Jacob and his people stayed there, in fact, the place was very attractive to them. It was attractive. The settlement was good. I mean, so were there. And it became a distraction for, for, for Jacob. Now, before he left that place, as Mr. Woman has told us, he was shaking off everything that reminds him of that land. Because remember, in, in the first verse of the chapter 35, God says, build an altar there to me. We cannot go. We cannot, we cannot go and build an altar to God when you have other other gods. Are you also going to build altars for them? Remember the God that you are worshiping is a jealous God. So, for for Jacob, see, I must let go of all these small small things that either me or my wife or my children even have. Now God has appeared to me clearly, and He says I should build an altar to Him. I cannot go and be building that altars to God. So anything that reminds me of what I have gone through, no, I have to bury it here. It is going to be a new beginning. So that is why he will ask them to, to let go of their idols and their earrings. This does not mean that you are not supposed to wear earrings. So, uh, you are afraid of the other pastors who talk about, don't, please, don't, do please, I beg you. Please, I beg you. For Jacob, it was a new beginning, and he was letting go anything that he, he had acquired, or might have acquired in that time when he stayed in, in Shechem. So it was a time for new beginning to hold on totally to God, totally to God. So we move to our last but one question. What name change does God give to Jacob? And what does it signify? So God will change the name of Jacob. So what name, what name change occurs here? And what is the, the, the signification? Mm -hmm. Anybody to help us? Anybody to help us? So, yeah, Genesis 35 verse 9. Uh, what, what do you find there? Anyone to help us? Good. So the answers are coming through the charts. So Evelyn Nelson Freeman says, his name was changed to Israel. He will become the father of nations. Oh, okay. His name was changed to Israel. Uh, he will become the father of nations. Okay, so look at that closely. Then from Ruby Kodom says the name was changed to Israel. Gives you to Israel. So yes, the name was changed to Israel. The name was changed to Israel. So I read. When Jacob returned from Mesopotamia, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, your name is Jacob, but from now on, it will be Israel. But we should know that uh, Jacob's name was changed in some chapters back. I hope you remember when he was he was wrestling with the, the angel or that unknown being in the garden before he met his brother. Yes, if you remember, he struggled with the man from... from from midnight, from the night till about daybreak. And this man tells him, Hey, shall the time has come for me to leave? Ah, 
Hey, and I remember what he tells you. See, I help me. Hey, me and you today we are dying. Here. If you don't bless me, I'm not letting you. So that 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 that, that, that being will ask him, what is your name? And he says, my name is Jacob. Said, no, your name cannot be Jacob. Your name is Israel. Is Israel. Is Israel. What is the meaning of Israel? The man who contends with God. The man who fights with God. The man who wrestles with God. The one the man who I mean struggles. With God, yes. So that is the name of Jacob. That he was going to be a man who find his way back to where he must be. And in fact, throughout the Bible, we see the people of Israel doing this, always fighting with God. God gives them commandments, they break it, they go on their knees, they'll ask for mercy. God will come and show them mercy. Yes. So they'll always be struggling, fighting, wrestling with God. And in fact, this is the story of our lives. We also God. We also do wrestle with God. But I know that we should know that God will always win his way. After struggling and struggling and fighting and fighting with God. I think the last prayer that I should be saying is Lord. Let your will be done and not mine. Right? So Jacob's name was changed to Israel, the man who struggles, the man who fights, the man who wrestles, the man who contends with God. Now, our final question. Our final question. So a few, a few people die. A few people who die in the in the distant in chapter thirty five. I want us to to name them. Uh, let us name the people who die in chapter thirty five. So yes, who are the people who die in Genesis chapter thirty five? What the people who die in Genesis chapter 35? Let's mention the names. The people who will die. Deborah. Rachel. I'm waiting for your answers. Rachel and Deborah. Rachel and Isaac. Rachel and Isaac. Please, sorry, sorry for the break in transmission again, the internet too. Please, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so we have mentioned Deborah, we have mentioned Rachel. Who again? Who again? Isaac and Isaac and Isaac. So this will be the, the people who will die in Genesis chapter 35. Now the second part of the question says state what the death of people can accomplish among family members. When somebody dies in a family, uh, what are some of the things that uh, the family can go through? What are some of the accomplishments? What happens to the family? When, when somebody dies and this one is a general it's a general question general a general question to, to our own way of living it's already eight o'clock let us just two more minutes so that we can we can wrap up yes. yeah so when somebody dies yes there's that sense of grief there's that sense of grief and this one evelyn nelson freeman is telling us that's grief what again what again what again what again? Yes, sometimes uh, the death of a person in the family can bring about unity. Can bring about unity. Usually, we hear as soon as somebody dies, 
uh, everybody troops into to to the home of the bereaved person. They see people, I mean, trying to be of support, to encourage, to strengthen, to to give words of consolation. Yes, to unity. And I'm very happy. I was going to add divide, and yes, Ruby Kudum just added. It's not only unity. Sometimes to death can divide. So a parent dies and the children will be divided, first of all, because of property. And sometimes when people want to accuse others, yes, you are the one who have killed, you are the one who have done, you are the, oh. And this one it is the women who have suffered. Who. A man dies and they say the, 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 the wife is the one who has killed him. But when a woman dies, nobody, nobody ever accuses the man. Hmm. Some more. Yeah, so death also brings that. Yes. Then, yes, the sharing of property. Uh, it's that can also make you realize we we'll all die one day. So it becomes like a reality check. Uh, it puts us on our toes. Hey, he was just with me yesterday. Today he's no longer there. That can also happen to you. So the death of a person can really, I mean, I mean, screw your, your head back onto your, your neck so you know that, see, you will not always be here. You know, so yeah, so a lot of a lot a lot of ancestors are coming, unify or divide the property, makes you realize you all die one day. I mean, we grieve and you know, there's also succession, then a sense of loss, a sense of a loss, a sense of loss. So, my dear people of God, I thank you so much for for these inputs that you have made into today's discussion. I pray that we have learned something. Uh, from these two chapters, uh, I pray that we will not uh, be too aggressive like the like the sons of Jacob, so as to over tilt the scale of of justice. Uh, sometimes it's good to to take the calm demeanor of of Jacob. Yeah, he he's an old man. He has wisdom, so it's not everything that we do rashly. Sometimes. We just have to be calculating in what you do. So thank you so much for joining in today's discussion. Let us share a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank and bless you for being with us. We pray that as we have gone through the chapters 34 and 35 of Genesis, you, Lord, will help us to put into practice the good that we have learned and also eschew the bad that we have seen. We ask that you, Lord, will continue to deepen us in your word so as to strengthen our faith. We ask all these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. I am with your spirit. Amen. May the blessings of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain upon you all, now and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. Once again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. All right. Good night. Thank you, Father. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.